Okay, so the the law itself is very simple and straightforward. The piece of legislation is like four pages long, uh, and it's a real quick read. But the challenge with the legislation, and I'll come back to what it says, uh, was simply that the provinces didn't think the federal government had the authority to to create that piece of legislation, right? So in our constitution, we have uh, authorities divided between uh, between federal, you know, federal powers and provincial or territorial powers. And the way that this thing was written, uh, a lot of the provinces, uh, Quebec was the the glaring example, thought, well, this is the feds encroaching into our jurisdiction. They shouldn't have been able to do this, right? Like who who gets to do what with genetic testing? And the feds said, no, 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 this is criminal law. So that's what the that's what the court case was an argument about. It was about whether or not the feds actually had the right to pass this genetic anti discrimination legislation or non discrimination legislation, uh, and and the provinces said no. But the Supreme Court sided on on the federal side. In order to be under the criminal law, it has to be getting at the kind of things that criminal laws get at. And the argument was that because this law, like the 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 main goal of the law, was to prohibit your employer from telling you. I want you to get genetic testing before I'll hire you, or I want you to provide me, provide me with a copy of your testing, and also to prohibit insurers from saying, you need to get testing before we'll insure you, life insurance, you know, anything, uh, health insurance, et cetera. Uh, so that is regulating consumer, like that's regulating hiring and firing, which is a provincial thing. Employment standards are all provincial. Uh, and the idea of buying a product or service from someone who won't give it to you unless you've done genetic testing, right? Insurance. Though insurance is regulated provincially as well. So the argument then was, no, you're, you're telling people how they can interact as employers and how they can interact as, as sellers of goods or services. And those are provincial jurisdiction matters. The counter argument that it was criminal law was saying basically, no, because there's a harm to people that results from the fear of discrimination based on their genetics. And that's the kind of harm that we like to protect uh, in criminal law. The best example I've seen, I guess, as a comparison and how the criminal law protects privacy per se is like voyeurism laws, right? So voyeurism laws protect you from having someone look through your window and invade your privacy. Uh, that's, that's, a, that's a physical privacy. And this one is a data privacy but it's a privacy that's intended to prevent you from experiencing a harm, which is the harm of not having access to the public good of public health care, uh, because you're worried about that. So that's where the criminal law argument was made, right? Say that this is the kind of thing that we have criminal laws to prevent people from harming you by doing. We prevent people from doing this because that doing it will harm you uh, as a person from, from getting your genetic testing and accessing better health care. And so it was, uh, there's a lot of legal scholars who disagree with the decision, not because of the, not because it shouldn't be the case that we protect people from discrimination, but because of the division of powers within the constitution. So you'll see if you go online, there's a, a legal scholar named YY Brandon Chen, uh, and, and he argues that it should have been decided in favor of the provinces, meaning that the law should have been unconstitutional but that the provinces have a duty to step up and make laws similar to what the, the feds did. Um, and there's also some other, uh, Teresa Skaza at University of Ottawa has, has argued that this is an interesting decision because it, it expands um, privacy rights into, the, into a type of thing that can be protected by criminal law. Your privacy to your data uh, is a type of thing that can be protected by criminal law, which we haven't seen before. So it's a very novel, unique, thing what's happening on the in the legal space um but from the perspective of us as patients and caregivers and, and people who are worried about uh, genetic testing it's fantastic because it really puts uh, a damper in the idea that you should feel threatened um, by an employer or an insurer uh, telling you to get you no know, genetic testing they can't do anything now it's, it's five years in jail or a million dollar fine. Those are the, like the upper limits of, of what you could be charged or fined for violating this. So right, you're, you're going for a job and your employer says, we're gonna give you health insurance, two months uh, probation. And in that two months, we need you to get genetic testing. And then we'll submit that to the insurance company so that we have a full profile of you before we hire you and give you insurance. 
at the, if that's the case, you can file charges because it's a criminal law. You can go and, and file a criminal charge uh, and have them fined or jailed for that decision because it's discriminatory. So that I think if you're if you're a physician like Ron Cohn at Sick Kids, whose patients have refused genetic testing, this makes that conversation easier, right? Don't worry, get the testing. Nobody can hold it against you. It's private. It's protected. It's a criminal law. So what it means then is that you should not be forced to disclose or required to disclose your genetic testing when you go to get private health insurance, right? So your private health insurer can't say to you, I know you had testing when you were born, disclose it to me, give it to me. That being said, if you need access to medicine and you're applying for coverage, you have to disclose your condition, right? That's one of those exceptional access kind of components. So it's, if it's a late onset thing and you're not, it's not an issue where you don't require medicine, you can't be required to disclose that, that genetic testing. But you could imagine uh, without this kind of law, an insurance company would pick up on the idea that you could have late onset disorders and factor that into the cost of the plan saying, you know, you have a 35 year old employee who's tested for Pompeii that usually uh, becomes active in the forties. We got to start factoring that cost in because it's going to cost us money. You could see an insurance company being smart enough to do that. So I think that that's, this is the impact of this legislation on disease groups like Pompeii is to say, just because you have the testing and you know, there's something coming, doesn't mean you're going to be required to disclose that to your insurer or your employer. You won't have to disclose it until you require access to your medicine. 